So think of yourself as a package, a piece of packaging on the internet. You have a box, uh, you have a label, you have an image on the front, you have text. This text is your Twitter, it's your Facebook, it's your LinkedIn, it's your website, it's, it's all the places you're mentioned on the internet. I want you to Google yourself, not right now, like, but later. Go Google yourself, see what comes up. And like, I know everyone's done this, like everyone at some point has given into the narcissism and has looked themselves up on Google, it's a universal thing. Um, but I want you to do it with a bit of intentionality next time. I'm not kidding, it's really useful. Who am I? I actually want you to Google me. <laughs> um, so because this is my talk and this is the ultimate form of narcissism, can you go into Google and look up Liam Esler, E-S-L-E-R. And if I'm any authority at all on this topic, you should be able to find out who I am pretty quickly. So feel free to tell me who I am based on what you see on Google. What do I do? You are at DevWorld. I am at DevWorld. Yep. What else, what other information is there out there on me? You're a freelance game writer and producer? Yep. And author? Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Diversity advocate? Yep. Event manager? Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's like a lot of stuff out there on me. Um, and it's all very current. These are all things that I am interested in or do. Um, that paints a pretty accurate picture of me. It's pretty unique. There's not a lot of people who fit these particular groups. Um, there's also not a, people, a lot of people who fit this particular box who come and speak at iOS dev events, but hey. Um, so the whole idea of this is that personal branding is, is basically our digital packaging. It's our online persona. Your digital persona is, is just that. It's a persona, it's a construction that we create over time. Um, it usually, it, it's happened since the moment that you first got online, when you first regis registered for any account that's vaguely linked to your real name or the name you use online. Um, there, like if you go back far enough in my search results, there's a lot of them, by the way. Um, you can, I'm pretty sure you could find like, oh no, thank God I removed all my awful DeviantArt stuff. But there's like, there were awful DeviantArt poems from when I was 16, like romantic bullshit, it was awful. Um, and I was actually applying for a job and uh, the, the recruiter's like, hey, like the LinkedIn, because uh, the LinkedIn at the time uh, referenced DeviantArt and they went and found all my sappy romantic poetry. Sometimes, you know, things are on the internet that we don't necessarily want. It's really important to be conscious of that stuff. Your personal brand exists whether you like it or not. So you should take control of it. You, you want to be conscious of this stuff. Taking control of your own image is empowering. This is a part of the reason that I love selfies. I am a massive selfie advocate. Um, I think they're hilarious and ridiculous. Um, and for me, like, selfies was a really, really personal thing. I used to hate the way that I looked. Um, I used to, people, when I was growing up, people, you know, I was a bit chubby and, you know, had a lot of self-image issues and a lot of people told me that I looked bad. A lot of people told me that I was, I was shit and bad and, all these other things. Um, and it wasn't really until I started taking control of my own self-image through you know, stuff like selfies and trying to have control online that I started to actually feel comfortable with my self-image. Um, and the same thing is true of your online presence. Like, maybe it's not that personal, but you want to be able to empower yourself to take control of what's online about you. Because like, you don't want to let your unconscious make decisions for you which for many of you is probably what's happening now. You probably haven't spent a whole lot of thought thinking about each one of those Google results and what you look like from the first page. It's about intentionality. It's about deciding what you want those results to be. It's about trying to work out how you want to come across. It's about how you want people to perceive you. Because you should decide on the internet how you want people to see you. This isn't always the case, and we'll talk about that a little bit at the end. But for most of us, thankfully, we are able to have some modicum of control over this. 
So why is personal branding important? It's because it's the first thing, of course, when somebody sees your name, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to Google you. Of course they are. It's the obvious thing. Well, they might Bing you, sorry. Or AltaVista you. Is AltaVista still a thing? I don't think so. Um, basically, our digital presence is how people get to know us nowadays. I've met so many people over the internet, and most of how I know them is based on what they have online about them. It's often people's first introduction to us, and their first impression of us as well. And we all want to make a good first impression. We need to ensure that we're representing ourselves the way that we want to be represented, rather than the way our unconscious sort of lets us be represented. So be conscious. Think about what you're putting out there on the internet. Have a bit of intentionality about how you want to be perceived. Like, one of the key bits here is like, you have to kind of know yourself. There's a weird amount of self-reflection that's involved in marketing and branding. Um, and I know that those are very corporate sounding terms, but all it really means is, uh, it's all about perception. It's just about how other pe people perceive you versus how you perceive yourself. It's really important to know yourself. It's important to know sort of, oh, yeah, next slide. Um, it's important to know how to be authentic. You, in order to be authentic, you kind of have to know yourself on some level. You have to know your hobbies, your interests. What's your personality like? What are you, like, who are your friends? What kind of stuff gets you going? Personal branding is the intersection of your personality, your passions, your hobbies, your profession. And it's what makes you unique. It's the sum of all of these things. It's not some weird corporate marketing buzzword. All it is is just how we represent ourselves. And in order to do this, it's really important that we have goals, that we think about this process, what we're trying to achieve. And even if you don't necessarily have a strict goal right now, like you're not trying to get a job, um, maybe you're not trying to get the attention of certain organizations or whatever, having goals for your social media, et cetera, is super helpful anyway. Because goals provide direction. Some common goals that people have for their you know, personal brand, if we're going to call it that, online, are like, I want to expand my network to include, include certain groups of people. Um, so for me, like, I want to get to know, I don't know, game developers over in Canada. I want to get to know indie developers who are you know, in Africa. There's an amazing South African game dev community. I've always wanted to get to know them. Actually, they're really cool. And I recently was able to do that by sort of starting to target how I talked online towards those people and re wrote, like reached out to them and actually was intentional about it. Um, maybe you want to get a job. This is uh, usually the most common one. Um, maybe you want to become known in your field as a specialist in a particular area. Um, maybe you just want to get more speaking gigs. Goals can change over time, and they usually do, right? The key is to have them. The key is to have goals in the first place. Goals are signposts, and they can be a rubric for success. Um, it's really, really great to have a way to sort of track progress with anything, whether it's the gym, whether it's your project. You know, the way that you represent yourself online should be no different. Some examples of not great goals, like, and more money, get the fames, um, abs, run a national survey through the Australian Bureau of Statistics. <laughs> Ideally, goals should be smart. They should be specific, they should be measurable, they should be achievable, they should be realistic and time-bound. And I hope that you've all heard these before, and if, you, if this is new to you, go look it up. It's a really great way to specify goals. The basic part of this is like, just have some goals. I don't care what they are, just have them. They're helpful because they help define our audience, who we're talking to, who we want to talk to. Who is your audience online? Who do we want to engage? Who do we want to follow us on social media? Who do we want to be looking us up, etc.? Because like a game dev and a front end dev talk so differently, they hang out in different spaces, the way that they engage with the internet is different. We should take that into account. So how do we identify an audience and the audience that we want? Basically, and this is really terrible, drive wedges between people. Um, you want to find ways to separate groups of people. This is called demographics. It's very, very straightforward. Um, so, for example, there are people who like my humor, and there are those who don't. This is 
a very simple way of differentiating two groups of people. And there are infinite ways to slice this pie. Well, I mean, not this specific one, but other ones. I want you to think about age, industry, hobbies, interests, knowledge base, ability to give you many money, location. All of these things are ways to differentiate people. And you should consider these things because your audience is going to change your approach online and who you're targeting. You identify what kind of people you want to interact with and engage with. And I don't necessarily mean like on a corporate bullshit business level. Most of this for me is about finding friends. It's about finding people that I connect with. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a profile in my field, and I don't really need to work hard at that anymore. So for me, it's like I just want to meet cool people all over the world in my field. Um, so if I can identify that, what I actually mean by that, what that target audience is, I can then do that. Because you need to know what, your con what content your target audience enjoys in order to kind of think about this stuff and work out how to target them. What are they looking for? Knowledge is power, right? So get at it. Find successful examples of people who've done this in your field, who have profiles like the ones that you want, who have followers like the ones that you want, who manage to reach the same audiences that you want to reach. What makes them work? I am like a fucking fiend with spreadsheets with this kind of stuff, so I will just spend hours <laughs> just like working out like this works and this works and this doesn't work and this person doesn't do this very well, but I think that I could steal this. Um, I do way too much research into this stuff. It's ridiculous. You don't have to do that much, but pay a bit of attention when you're browsing the internet. It can be really useful for you. And you shouldn't overdo it. Just keep it in the back of your mind. So there are some things to consider here. Like one is like what language you use, what kind of content you post, and what platform you're on. Knowing your audience helps you work out your positioning. So positioning is a marketing term. It's just a way of like, putting yourself in a market of people in a group. There are a, a few key things here. One of them is like, what makes you different? What's your unique selling proposition? Basically, like, what can you provide that other people can't? How do you fit within the market, and how do you compare to others? And most of the time, this is your personality. It's your hobbies. It's why you're fucking awesome and everyone else isn't as cool. Everyone in this room has something super interesting and unique about the intersection of their hobbies and their work. Like, I swear, all of you are super, super interesting. Finding ways or, or working out how you can actually define that and then put it up in a tagline somewhere is super helpful because it's going to help you meet people that you want to meet. And you just do a ton of research on this stuff. You also need to know who your audience is so that you know what channels you can find them on. So where is your audience? Are they on Twitter, on Facebook? Do they only use email? Are they even on the internet? Um, obviously, if you're trying to find a job in architecture and most of the firms that you want to work for aren't really up with the times, like, sure, you should have a LinkedIn, you should have stuff on the internet, but you shouldn't spend that much time trying to attract them on Twitter unless there's specific people you're targeting. In which case, like, maybe you should go to in-person things. But like, work out where your audience is. If they are online, great. Save time and spend it where your audience is. It's also really important to manage your expectations. What do you want or expect out of your online presence? Are your goals clear enough to create realistic expectations for yourself? What about success and failure criteria? Because branding is a super fucking long game. As I said, it's like every piece of information about you that's on the internet ever. All of this contributes to what we call your brand, the, you know, your persona, the, the thing that represents you digitally. Um, so in order to, to change that or in order to um, attract certain kinds of people to your social media, et cetera, it's going to take a long time. Um, and it's not something that like, you just like, achieve and then stop. Like, because it's just the way that you're representing yourself, it goes on forever. Um, and all I'm advocating here is that you be conscious of that. So let's talk about stuff you can do sort of right now that's not shitty, weird theory. The first thing is obviously, are you easy to find? So if you, if you Google your name, do you come up? Are you in the first page? Are you in the first five pages? Do you come up at all? Because if an employer goes to Google your name, like they probably want to find out information about you. If they can't find you, that's a problem. What comes up when you search yourself? 
if you've got a really common name, consider adding a middle name. Does that help? Um, or even add a nickname. And have this consistent across all of the internet, your business cards, etc. Have something like unique about you that's identifiable that, that search engines can index and use, and that people will then search. Make sure you've got a Twitter, or a LinkedIn, a website, Facebook. Um, yeah, LinkedIn is important. I'm really sorry. Um, if you're actually, it's only useful if you're in like the U, a non-European Western country, because Europe doesn't use LinkedIn that much. In which case, if you're aiming for a, a European audience, you want to get a job in Europe, etc., you should probably have your CV up on your website instead. You also want to make sure that everything's up to date, including that shitty old website. Um, so many people have outdated websites that would not be that hard to update. And it's a really bad look, especially if it says that you're working a job that you stopped working at five years ago. Um, it happens a lot, and it's usually one of the first Google results. Um, the other thing is that a good tagline makes a lot of difference. It's really, really important to work out what's the sentence that, sort of, that you put out into the world to sum you up. Um, like in, when I give talks about networking, I often talk about like your one-liner, which is the idea that when you meet someone new, you should have like a really basic one sentence that you can use to introduce yourself that gets across. Like, who are you? What do you do? What do you care about? Um, for me, um, depending on the context, it, should, it changes. But like, so I'm, hi, I'm Liam Ezra. I am a game developer. I run Australia's Game Development Conference. And I am obsessed with RPGs and romance. Um, it's a succinct. Like, ish, <laughs> concise ish sentence that kind of describes me and sets me apart from other people. Um, on the internet, you need to have this too, and it needs to be consistent across your different profiles. So, this is my Twitter. Um, it's not the best I've ever seen, for sure, but it gets across the point. Um, it's had, like, there's a slight sense of humor there. Um, it explains what I do, what I'm interested in, what my sort of current activities are, what my past activities are. And for the people in my audience, they'll know what these things mean. Um, and it has relevance and importance to them. So for example, like if you don't play RPGs, you're not going to know who Obsidian are. But Obsidian are one of the biggest creators of RPGs. So the fact that I've worked there is a big deal to my specific target audience. And so that's why I have it there, because it's relevant and important to the people that I'm trying to reach. You should state your goals, who you are, what you care about. Because at the end of the day, nobody can read your mind. Like, nobody's going to know that you want to get a job unless you tell them that you're trying to get a job. So if you are trying to get a job, like, have it in your description. Make a joke out of it. Like, include it somewhere. Don't just have a blank profile, because otherwise nobody's going to know. Maybe the perfect employer comes across you on the internet, and they never find out that you're looking for work. Keep things consistent across profiles. I've kind of talked about this a little bit. Use the same profile picture, name, and tagline across as many things as you can so that Google indexes the search together. Um, and all of those come up quickly. Um, some tips for Twitter. I spend most of my time on Twitter because I'm a massive dork. Um, so you have to think about what channel your platform, like what platform your audience is on, what channel they're on. Um, what, what, the, what is the tone for that? So for Facebook, it's like casual and personal. For Twitter, it's pithy, smart, direct. Um, for LinkedIn, it's professional and businessy. You know, we're not going to make like weird, bad jokes on LinkedIn, but we're totally going to do that on Twitter and Facebook. And the question that I get asked the most about Twitter is like, what the fuck should I post? A lot of people are really confused about like specifically, what do you post on Twitter? Like, how the fuck does that work? Um, so, think about your goals, your hobbies. Your interests, these are some of the things that you can post. It's really quite straightforward. Um, you want to post consistently. Set aside time to do it, like a couple of minutes a day. Um, I, I actually spend like over an hour on Twitter every day because I really like Twitter, and a lot of my international friends are on there, and it's the main way that I network with them. Um, if you can, like one to three tweets or posts on social media is really good. Just keeps up that presence. Um, and the way that I try to think about what kind of content I'm posting is I split it into three sections, or three rough thirds. The first one is like just being human. 
So like me talking about my cats or food or my partner or my hobbies, my interests, like, oh, that is a cool game that's coming out. I'm really excited about that. Oh, here's a story that you know, makes me look bad. Um, here's, oh, I missed the train, all that kind of stuff. Stuff that makes me clearly human and not a bot. Um, stuff that I want to share with other people. The next one's like personal and professional advocacy for me. So here's a piece of work that I've done. Um, here's something that I'm working on, I'm really passionate about, I'd like feedback on. Here's a question I have for the industry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And one part, industry or cause advocacy or other engagement. So usually for me, this is like there are causes that I'm really passionate about and I want to help uh, make those voices louder. So I'll engage with that content, I'll retweet it, I will talk about it, um, I will you know, shout it from the rooftops that you should all vote yes on the postal vote. Um, stuff like that, like that's what I use Twitter for. That's what it's good for. So just think about these, like this is like when I'm like, oh God, what am I gonna post today? I have a think about this, like what haven't I done recently? What haven't I posted of this list? Um, and usually it helps me try to work that out. Um, and it's really, really important that you actually engage with people on social media because it's called that for a reason. Um, engage with people and content you enjoy. Um, my other ratio is that I, I actually respond to things and engage with things twice as often as I post. Um, actually, three times as often as I post, according to my stats. Um, so I like spend a lot of time talking to people and replying to things and engaging with content that I'm interested in. And people really respond to that. It works well. The other thing that's really important is to retweet voices that you feel are important. Raise people up. There are a lot of people whose voices aren't as loud as yours. And that doesn't mean that their opinions or points of view are any less valid. But maybe they don't have a bigger platform as you do. So raise them up, retweet them, like share their content. And you should fuck around, like experiment. On Twitter, like there are lots of different ways of doing things. Um, I've been playing around with tweet threads. Um, I love ranting about shit, so especially in the games industry. Um, so I've tried like a bunch of different ways of doing that. Like what do people respond to? What works best? What's the best me method of conveying information? And then I'll go to Twitter analytics and see what people actually respond to. You want to be human. You want to be weird and wonderful and authentic. People can tell if you are not. People can tell if you're trying to put on a persona. Those are the most boring social media profiles you can imagine. It's awful. They're shitty. Like, why would you do that? This includes things like posting meaningful quotes on, like, pretty backgrounds. Like, how pers like that's not personal at all. It's got nothing to do with you. Like, why would you do that? Nobody's going to engage with that. Um, and... I swear to God, don't you dare like sign up for a service that sends automated DMs when you when someone follows you. I will hunt you down <laughs> and I will end you. These are so annoying. And it's the most like false way of trying to create intimacy I can possibly imagine. And it turns people off instantly. Because people want to see and interact with people online. So be a people. Like be human. Be weird and wonderful. Be interested in weird shit. Be cool, share things. So, some final thoughts. Think about the package that is you on the internet. Think about what it looks like now versus what you want it to be. Have a think about what sort of goals you want. Like, think about all this stuff. Just, I don't want you to stress about it. You shouldn't stress about it. This is just stuff that you should have at the back of your mind. Put some thought into it. Like, spend a little bit of time on it but then relegate it to your unconscious and just let it sit there. Let it like operate quietly. And every now and then come back to it, reevaluate. Like, are you on track? Are you kind of doing the things you want to do? Are you achieving the goals that you want to achieve? Are you talking to the people you want to be talking to? Are you engaging with the people you want to be engaging with? And are you being authentic? Empower yourself by making conscious choices about how you represent yourself online. This is really important and it's really simple. Because nothing on the internet is ever going to be removed. <laughs> it's all permanent. Don't post weird stuff that you know is going to come up in five years. Think a little bit. Be conscious about the way that you're representing yourself, both personally and professionally. Um, just think. And put yourself in the browser of someone else. How would you come across if all they knew about you was what they saw online? What kind of person are you if that's the case? It's, really, it's a really, really useful thing to think about. It's also really important to remember that your persona, your 
brand is not you. It is not you. It's a construction that's created over time. And sometimes our agency over our online image can get taken away and we get harassed, doxxed, or otherwise abused. And this is, can be a really, really horrific experience. And in cases where this does happen, it's really important to remember that the way that we represent ourselves online isn't us. There's a separation there. They're not necessarily attacking you personally. They're attacking the representation of you because it's easier for them, because they're cowards. And if this does happen to you, I recommend checking this out. Um, it's a resource that was created by Zoe Quinn after Gamergate. Uh, and it is amazing. It's funded by Feminist Frequency, and it's very, very useful. It has a lot of really great information about locking down profiles across the internet, internet security, um, and how to sort of deal with when you're getting doxxed, etc. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions about social media? or branding, or networking, or anything like that. Yeah? So the question is, um, if you have two very separate Areas of interest or whatever are two separate sort of personas. Um, how do you deal with that? Do you create separate profiles, etc., um, or would you merge them? Uh, this is a question that comes up a lot. Um, a lot of people have questions about personal and professional profiles, particularly, um, and how you should deal with that intersection. Um, it really kind of depends on what you're trying to do, right? This is where the goals come into it. So, if you are trying to get work in a specific field, you know. Think about what, the, like, what kind of people are going to get you jobs, how are you going to talk to them, what do they want to see. Um, and uh, like in my experience, honestly, um, a lot of the time there is a weird intersection that I didn't know about. And people appreciate hearing things that they don't expect. So someone in software who's talking about racing cars or whatever is actually super interesting. It, it's, it sets you apart from other people. But if that's not your goal, if the goal isn't to attract a specific type of person, and or they're mutually, mutually exclusive, yeah, like absolutely have separate profiles. Um, it really comes back to sort of what you're trying to do. Anyone else? Yeah? So the question is, uh, should you try to split out content that's maybe not relevant to specific audiences? Um, I don't think so. It's like my experience, and I can only talk from my own experience, has been that the kind of people that I want to engage with online usually appreciate the intersections that I'm into. Um, for me, it's, it is very much about being authentic. Um, I don't want to try to cut up who I am and what I'm interested in um, for no real reason when I don't have to. Um, sometimes there are circumstances where you do have to. Um, I have lots of friends who are you know, into kink communities, et cetera, who want to separate their personal lives and their professional lives because it wouldn't reflect well on them professionally if their work knew about you know, what they're into in their bedroom. Um, lockdown personal profiles are a really great way to do that. Um, you can have a personal profile that is locked down that nobody public can see. And that's a really, really great way to separate out stuff that you feel is maybe not appropriate for public consumption. Um, but yeah, like when it's just different topics, like I would say absolutely go for it. If, that's, if you're into two different things, that makes you unique. Like that's really interesting. It makes you different from other people. So absolutely talk about all that stuff. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> so that one's more complicated. Um, then it's more about sort of creating, so the goal is to get a job, and then you try to work out a strategy to do that. 
Um, so something like Twitter can come in handy to get contacts at specific places that you want to work at. So maybe it's that you obviously don't broadcast that you're trying to get another job, but um, you work on trying to reach specific people or specific or people in specific organizations who are going to be able to help you. So it's more about networking there um, rather than being like, hey, I want to jump ship. Um, and then it's, yeah, about creating a relationship with those people um, that, again, should be authentic and maybe laid like, down. They can help you get a job. Yeah. Um, so I guess I have a question, like, as we develop and Pushing our personal brands to our new interests and our new competitors in our service. So we are we need to do a rebrand side, or should we look at rebrand as a way of getting into that new market? So the question is, as we and our interests change, should we <coughs> rebrand or take time to sort of reevaluate our social media profiles, etc., or should we let it happen organically? Um, I am a big fan of refreshes. Um, I actually enjoy the process of kind of going through and rethinking. Um, like how I'm presenting myself, uh, just because I'm a marketing idiot. Um, but I think that it, like, it can totally happen organically. There's nothing wrong with um, your interests changing, because they're going to change, and people recognize that. And some people are going to be interested in the stuff that you're interested in, and some people are going to, you're going to lose other people, and that's totally normal and fine. Um, I would say that it's important to have like your description instead of reflect like what you're interested in. Like you don't want it saying that you're really interested in I don't know, My Little Pony, when that was a phase that you went through three years ago, and now you're really into Pokemon again. Um, so you, like, it should be somewhat current, right? Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely a fan of being like a little bit more strategic about how I present myself. Um, I say that now, but like a lot of the time that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah, like I recently added like a lot of more businessy stuff because I'm like moving into business and games. And so for me, like I've been trying to work out like, okay, I have an audience of people who, who listen to me, like God knows why. And, but they're interested in specific things. And so as I am getting more into this really different world, like are those people going to be interested and are they going to come along for the ride with me? And after talking to a lot of people and experts, like basically the consensus seems to be that, you know, it kind of doesn't matter. I should just go ahead and do it. And if they're interested, they're going to listen. They're going to come along with me. And if they're not, they're just going to unfollow me. And that's totally fine, because you obviously are going to lose followers or people, whatever, over time, depending on how your interests change. So yeah, I, it's not something I would stress about too much. Cool. That's all we've got time for. Thank you so much. Um, I hope everyone has a lovely dev world. Come say hi at dinner.